Welcome everyone to today's video in which I'm going to be showing you on how to wire up a high room thermostat to a combi boiler. Now if you haven't already, before we go any further, please, please, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps me out and I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it useful. Let's get on with it. Welcome to today's video. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a hive thermostat to a combi boiler in this video. So this is a Worcester CDI and I'm going to show you how I wire it to this, but I'm also going to give you a little bit of a run through on the different ways that you can wire it as well. I've also done a separate video on how to wire room thermostats in a number of different ways. So I'll put a link to that video up here and I'll also put a link in the description below if you want to have a look at that one as well. But first and foremost, I'm going to, I've turned the power off, taken the fuse out, I'm going to make sure that all the power is dead there. And then we're going to start wiring up the receiver and then show you a couple of different ways that you can wire it depending on the boiler that you're working on. And then we'll go through the setup procedure with the thermostat and everything as well. Okay, so first thing we want to do is make sure that the power is dead. So let's use my voltage tester here. So checking between live and neutral. Yeah, that's dead. Live and earth. Nothing there, and neutral and earth. Yep, nothing there as well. So I know that's safe to disconnect now on the Worcesters. You've got this connector block, so you can literally just unplug that. So that now makes our wiring a lot more easier because you can wire straight into this and then plug that back in. All boilers will have different terminals. So depending on the boiler you're working on, you might have easy access to the terminal like this or you might have to wire it straight into the PCB. But we've got this, so this is good. So my plan is I'm actually gonna put the Hive receiver on this little panel there, and then put a, make a hole behind it, and then just feed the wire through so it's a little bit more clean. I want to put it somewhere inside here, but there's not really much space. So I think that's gonna be the best place to put it. So that at least even when you unscrew that and you open it, I'll leave enough slack on the cable so you can move it out for any maintenance work and things like that. Now on the backlet of the hive for a combi boiler, the terminals that we're going to be using is neutral and live, which we're going to take from the neutral and live supply here. And then one is going to be our common. So that needs to be permanently live. Now in Worcesters, you have LS, which is our live supply. You also have NS, which is our neutral supply. We can take a LS and NS straight to a live and neutral. So that's going to give our hive a live and a neutral supply. We'll then put a link between live and one. That will be our common. And then number three, which is our call for heat, and that will go back to LR, which is live return. So that's basically our switch live. Now, in other some boilers, you may not have the live supply and the neutral supply. So what you would do is you would basically join the live and the neutrals, as in not join them together, but you'd T back into the live, T back into the neutral, take another live and neutral feed to there. You then do the same, put a link between live and one. And then number three would go back to whatever your switch live is on your boiler. Some boilers may have just another live supply. So then in that situation, you would take live and neutral from your main terminals to the hive. You would take live supply from your terminal block to number one. And then number three from there would come back to your switch live, which might be an LR or an RT or whatever. However, they distinguish it within the different boilers. You just put it back into your switch live, but that's basically how you install it. So it's just live and neutral, put a link between live and one, and then three goes back to your switch live.
So there we go. So that's the back plate all wired up. So we've got our neutral in there. I've used a double ferrule on the live. So that's got a link between live and one. So that's going to be powering the common. Gray is our number three. That's going to be our switch live and earth is earth. So I'm going to pop that behind it there, make a hole in that back panel there, feed the cable through and then wire it back into the boiler. Right, so I've just mounted that on that panel there. It's got the cable coming out behind it. And now whilst it's here, I'm just gonna pop the front case back on because once it's in there, it's gonna probably get be, be a bit tricky. So that's the panel back together. You can see the hive is literally just sitting there. Now I've left enough slack on the cable, tucked it up behind there so that if there's any maintenance work that needs to be done on the boiler, you can undo the two screws on that panel, move it out and pull it out of the way. And you've got plenty of slack on that. So try and keep it all easy maintenance for going forward as well. Now, all I've got to do is strip these cables back and wire it straight back into this terminal block here. So let's get that done. Then we can power it on and test it all. So guys, it's all wired into the terminal block. So I even just, I just thought while I was doing it, I'd take the existing live and neutrals out and just put them in ferrules as well, just to make it a little bit more neater. So we've got our live and neutral terminals. Then we've got NS, which is our neutral supply. That's going to the hive down there. We've got a live supply, which is going to the hive. And then live return, which is number three, coming back from the hive. And the earth, I've just strapped it onto there. Now, these are the two old thermostat cables so i'm just going to snip them back so they're redundant now we don't need them anymore plug this back in turn on the thermostat itself power it up and then give it a test so power's back on so you've got the green light on there that's all paired up as well so what we want to do because this has got a built-in clock leave that to on so that's basically giving a constant demand to heating but we don't actually want the heating to come on until we turn it up from the thermostat. So now target temperature, I've just pressed the boost button. So it's boosting for 15 minutes. The target is 22. Let's ramp that up. That's clicked on. We should now get a heating demand on here, obviously. If I turn that up, there we go. Burners on and boilers fired up for heat. And now from here, if I turn that down, that should click off on there. Yeah, target's 20. See, that's flashing. I always find that on the hives, there's always a bit of a delay. Obviously, the boiler's gone into siphon fill mode as well, but there's a delay on there, so that will click off. And then once the boiler finishes going through siphon fill mode, the burn will go out as well. Now, all I've got to do is set up the app for the customer on this phone so they can control it using the mobile phone. But other than that, there you go, demand's gone off now. It's clicked off. So then they can be able to control it all from the phone. But in terms of installing a hive to a combi boiler, that's as simple as it gets. So Remember in your receiver, you need a live and neutral supply. You then put a link between live and one, which is your common. When you put the demand on, that's going to send the 230 volts to number three, which is your switch live. That's going to go back to your boiler and tell the boiler to come in for heating. Now, like I said, there's a number of different ways that you can wire it depending on the boiler that you're working on, but this is the simplest way to wire it. I'm going to put the link to the other videos uh, in the description below. So have a look at that if you want to get a little bit more information about different ways to wire it. But Hive is done and I'm on to the next one.